Hi there, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Today, we're going to be taking a look at what is widely hailed as the first heavy metal album. Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Now, my version of Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath is the digitally remastered version. I was fortunate that in my early days of getting into Black Sabbath, I just got a Black Sabbath box set right off of that, which, you know, had pretty much everything from the Aussie years, which is what it was called. Uh, so when they started doing the digital remasters, that is when I started buying the official individual albums because the quality is so fantastic taken from the original recordings. Brings it to life. So, let me start with, I love the album artwork. This is legendary album artwork, right? Okay. Fantastic. You just can't beat it. It's simple. But fantastic. Anyways, moving on. Let's get into the album. An album that would have horrified a generation of parents. Because it was so dark and... I don't want to say evil. It's, a, it's such a horrible misconception. Everybody, you know, hear Black Sabbath and they automatically associate with Satanism and stuff like that. No, a cult, sure. But it's not like they were out preaching about going out and doing anything occultish. If anything, these guys were some crazy ass hippies. Really, they honestly were. Uh, if you actually pay attention to some of the lyrics and some songs, not necessarily on this album, but later on. Anyways, I'm rambling. So let's get into it. Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. The song Black Sabbath kicks it off. Album opens up. Church bell going off in the distance during a, a rain slash thunderstorm. You can hear that you're in the graveyard. You know something ominous is coming. And the music and the sound and everything just sets the mood perfectly for the Okay, so I know I sound like an idiot, but that's not the point, man. That's one of the most ominous openings of all time and beautifully constructed and just laid out and I mean if you if you've ever played in a hard rock heavy metal band Black Sabbath is something you have to study you have to and I have studied it I've studied the guitar I have studied the bass I have studied the drums I have studied the lyrics you know Black Sabbath is my second favorite band next to Alice Cooper you know tells you everything right there you know Two bands that I have studied inside and out, and and Black Sabbath the song is mandatory just to understand the vibrato of a guitar, just to understand the simplicity of playing slowly, and you don't have to have a clear definitive rhythm going on, a clear definitive melody. Having that each individual instrument doing its own thing, bringing its own element, its own piece to this design structure. And it's the lead-off track on the album! Oh my god! Like, what are we in where we are in for genius, okay? This is why Iomi is one of the great guitar gods and no one will ever debate it, okay? Never debate it. Okay, after that, we go into The Wizard. Now, I love The Wizard purely because of the harmonica playing on it. Little known fact, I love playing harmonica. It was the very first instrument I ever taught myself how to play. Seriously. I'm not great at it, but I love it. And I have tried many times to get this just right. And it is not easy. It is a fantastic song, though. But, you know, you get that little harmonica bit at the beginning that kicks it open. And... Then you go bow 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 da da bow 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 Bill Ward's drumming. I, you know, everybody always talks about Tony Iommi and and obviously Ozzy, right? Everybody's Ozzy. You know, first off, I love Ozzy, but he's not 
Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is Black Sabbath, and Ozzy is thankful to have a career courtesy of Black Sabbath. Let's be very clear about this, okay? But all peace and love to the Oz. But back to where I was going here. Bill Ward, drumming, underrated every time, man. You know, people go on about favorite drummers, and somehow Bill Ward gets left off way too often. I mean, because the dude was using so much jazz technique and whatnot. His drum work, he just, oh, wonderful. And the wizard just, oh, fantastic work for him to get going. The whole thing for the wizard, the construction, is just brilliant. Rambling on. There we go into Wasp. Slash behind the wall of sleep. Slash basically slash Ed I.B. Because we have all these wonderful instrumental parts that go into all these songs. Because this was a band of musicians. I mean, yeah, Ozzy's a vocalist. But Ozzy was the one that did a harmonica. No, he doesn't do a lot. And it's not fantastic. And he's not like a top-notch harmonica player by any stretch of the imagination. But he does what he needs to do. But Bill Ward, Geezer Butler, and Tony Iommi are the greatest set of musicians I could ever say. I mean, if one of them could have sang, they could have had a great trio. You know, get rid of Ozzy and just do this brilliant trio. It was just amazing. And the instrumentation on Wasp Behind the Wall Sleep basically start doing everything. And then you get to NIB, man. Oh. NIB, I mean, like, oh, it's fantastic. It is one of the most killer songs I can say I have ever heard. It just gets you going and moves you. Anyways, I'm rambling. From there, we go to Wicked World. Uh, Wicked World is one of those songs that I think is overlooked a little bit. It's a good tune, but it's a solid album tune. It's not a standout eh, it's kind of song. It doesn't do too much for me. And after that, we get the last track, which is yet another three-piecer. Uh, a Bit of Finger, Sleeping Village, and Warning. And this is all, yet again, a lot of instrumentation built into what's going on in this song. Um, it's not a mainstay in the Black Sabbath repertoire. It's not anything that gets a lot of push in, but it's a great way to finish off the original album. Basically, the way this album works is you've got two killer sides. First side, like, this album is all music. It is. It's all about the music. Ozzy's there. He is delivering poetry. I should point out poetry that was often written by Geezer Butler, not Ozzy. Um, but they'd have all these tracks laid down. They'd go at it. Geezer would be the one that would polish up the lyrics. He'd be the one that would add the voice to it. And they make these into these great killer epic songs. There is only five tracks technically on here. Only five. That's it. Think about that. Really, truly think about that for a second. Only five tracks on their first album. Three of which are mainstays. And then the, all the instrumentation that are, surrounds it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, this is amazing. Now, this is also what's called the North American release. Because there is a difference in the tracks between the North American release and the uh, England, the English release. Or the British release. Or the UK release. Whatever you call it. I believe it's the song Wicked World specifically is in the North American release, whereas the song Evil Woman is in the British release. On the second album, bonus track, Evil Woman's included. I'm not a fan of Evil Woman. It's not... I can see why it's not on the North American version. To me, I think Wicked World is probably a better version to put on there. Um, it was also it's also listed as a single for when it was released in North America it was a B-side uh, or A-side actually it was an A-side single according to us anyways um, whatever uh, from there we go into a version of Black Sabbath that's a studio outtake alright a uh, version of Black Sabbath that is purely instrumental I like that that's cool to dig on The Wizard a studio outtake Behind a Wall of Sleep studio outtake, NIB alternate version. 
cool. And it is cool. It's, you know, nothing to write home about, but it's cool. Uh, Evil Woman alternate version. Easy, man. Uh, Sleeping Village intro. Cool. And Warning Part 1. So, you know, uh, gets into it. The bonus tracks, they're cool. I pick them up because I want to hear the instrumentation. I, I like hearing the differences. I like hearing the evolutions of the songs or the changes in the song, the mix of stuff like that. Realistically, you could just pick up the single version of the remaster. There is a single disc version out there. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's... I've started picking up all the remasters for Sabbath, and some of them I picked up the double disc, some I picked up the single. It all depends on what's on them. I love this album enough where I picked up it for all the extras. Uh, inside, there's also a cool little booklet um, with a bunch of colored pictures, stuff that wasn't available before. You know, it, it, it's a nice redone uh, package that's so well done. I can't get the book out little bit of alternate artwork on the uh, package there. You know, notes, everything, a whole little mini book basically in here. So pick it up, read the mini book, enjoy. This is worth having. I highly recommend it. Anyways, as always, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I realize I ran a little short on this, but you know, it's a legendary album. You should really already know it and have it. If you don't, go out and buy it. Why don't you have it? But anyways, leave your comments below. Hit the little like button. Hit the uh, notification thing. That way you'll find out when I release new ones. Otherwise, I love you all. Peace and take care.